Hello, and thank you for listening to our Advent devotional podcast titled Finding Joy. I'm Pastor Zach. I'm the pastor of Holy Cross Lutheran Church in St. Cloud, Minnesota. If you do not currently have a home congregation, we invite you to join us for worship during our midweek Advent services at 4 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. and our Sunday services at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. You can find out more about our church by going to holy-cross.church, holy-cross.church. Again, our series is titled Finding Joy, and we begin with this question. Is joy a difficult emotion? Joy comes in so many different ways, and we express it in so many different ways. You can feel joy after success. You can feel joy after reuniting with somebody you haven't seen in a while. You can feel joy after eating a big meal. There's joy in adventure. There's joy in our response to things that are beautiful. There's joy when good, even small things come our way. Yet, it's also fleeting. It's so hard to catch on to, and it is so hard to keep. So, sure, yeah, maybe you can master your thoughts and through discipline attain a positive attitude, at least in theory. But joy, real joy, wide-eyed Big, smiling, forget-every-trouble kind of joy seems to only flash and then disappear in our lives. And making it even more difficult is that there are certain social rules about expressing happiness. Actually, there is one rule. Don't express it too much. Don't express joy too much. Because joy is kind of like grief. And that the same rule applies. If someone is always grieving and and prone to long displays of crying in public or long lists of telling you all of their troubles, well, they might face the consequences of being too emotional. They might be labeled, rejected, ignored. The same works for joy. It's often that joyful people are labeled as being too happy or that they are bragging about the good things that happen to them, making the rest of us feel terrible. So yeah, joy can be fleeting. It's a difficult emotion to hold on to, and it's a difficult emotion to express. So what if we did this? What if instead of counting our blessings, I'll say, Let's count our sorrows. I mean, how many are they? How long have they been around? Get them all lined up. And now I want you to tell them something. Tell them the words of Romans chapter 8, verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. With your sorrows all lined up still, there's one more thing I want you to do as well. Pray our Advent prayer. It's not the prayer that we've written. It's a prayer that the church has cried out for many centuries. And it's just simply this. Come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. Because you see, It's not that joy is a fleeting emotion or that we are never permitted to express it. In fact, one day we will have it in full and one day we will be fully capable of expressing it and it will be well received by all. Isaiah 51, 11. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. So there it is. It's not joy that's fleeting. It's sorrow. Come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly.